Welcome back to another video. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my new EST Quick Start QS1 Fire Alarm Demonstration System. I've had this system for a little while, but I just finally got the thing programmed. And first of all, a uh, big shout out to Canadian Alarms and CJ9899 who helped me out with getting this thing programmed. I know a lot more about how you actually do program these things as I before previously had no idea and had never programmed one of these before but now I certainly learned some things and main thing is it's programmed now and is fully operational. And this is an EST Quick Start QS1. They make three different versions of the Quick Start. There's the QSC, the QS1, and the QS4. Conventional Quick Start or the QSC which has a smaller screen on it and it can have up to I believe 40 zones and then there's this one the QS1 which is just addressable where you can have just addressable cards in it and you can have up to 250 points and it may be expandable to have another another uh, SLC card however I'm not sure if that gets you actually more points I don't think that doubles your points to 500 I think maybe that just offers you another loop but maybe not actually adding more points i'm not 100 percent sure on that then there's the qs4 which allows you to have that's the biggest one which allows you to do conventional and addressable it's a pretty versatile panel in that sense as you can have up to four slc cards with a total of a thousand addressable points as well as i believe it's 40 40 zones on it so pretty capable, and I think that can be expanded up to 16 NACs. It's a uh, full-way rectified power. And I'm not sure what the NACs are on the Quick Start QS1. It might be just two, but I think you could expand it to four NACs if you wanted to. Don't quote me on any of those specs of the QSC and the QS1 and the QS4. But basically, to simplify things without exact specs, the QSC is just conventional, and the QS1 is the smallest one, physically, really, as this is it right there, and it is just addressable up to 250 points. And then you have the QS4, which is addressable and conventional, which is the most capable and expandable. QS4 is a wider cabinet. You see this zone enunciation um, section, that big block of zone enunciation, the QS4 can have another one added on, and usually they have disable buttons on them too, which can be programmed. You could do even more, though, than just those amount of blocks. I believe if you had a enunciator, you can probably show more, I believe. So there's a few different quick starts, and all of them, they make Canadian models, which have a cover on the front. I don't believe the uh, American versions have them. I believe there's also a GE Quick Start. You can see this one is EST, but I think there is a GE branded version of these Quick Start panels as well. There's a few different ages of the panel, which you can tell by what brand and what logo is on them. I'm not sure of how you can tell. So let's talk about this demo system specifically instead of just the rest of them. So here is our quick start panel. We have our front door, which can be opened up, which is nice because it adds more protection to the actual panel. And uh, if you have disabling points, people can just walk up and disable them. It has this little flip down to give you your actual numbers and some of your system functions, as well as your controls and able key. These two guys right there are hooked up for this system. However, they're not labeled correctly and all the rest aren't there. And as I said, if this was a QS4, the whole panel would be wider and there'd be another whole section of these zone enunciation. We have an Edwards MB10-24 Bell, a Sega 270, Sega detector. This is an IPHS detector. You can tell from the front with the gold on it, some of them are silver and some of them are blue. The gold is kind of the best one of them. These detectors combine ionization and photoelectric and they have a heat sensor in them. 
tell which ones have that by the gold colored EST logo on the detector. I'm not sure what the difference is from the gold one and the silver one. I'm guessing the gold one has some function that the silver one doesn't have. And then there's also the one with the blue logo, which might just be smoke detection only. It might still be smoke and photoelectric just without the heat sensor. Or it might be just one type of smoke detection and the heat sensor. I'm not 100% sure. All I know is that the gold one has the most types of detection. And for a strobe, we have an EST Genesis strobe only. This guy is a 15 Candela. This SLC made up of two devices is wired just class B. It's just a demo system, so there was really no purpose of doing class A. Here is just another look at the outside of this EST Quick Start QS1 fire alarm panel. A look at this front door, which you can open. And once you take the key out of there, you can then open up the main panel. We're taking a look inside the panel here. Here is your main board, and then this is where you add on your addressable cards, which if this was a QS4, you could add on addressable and conventional cards. So this is one conventional card, or sorry, one addressable card, I should say, where each one gives you two NACs as well as your SLC loop. There you can see we're just running class B. That would be your return of the circuit. There's your out and that would be your return. And this is the riser here, which connects to the aux power and the common to bring power to these cards. These cards. They also do get their communication power through here, I believe. So this might just be redundant but I'm not 100% sure. I think it's definitely good to have both, I would assume. So that's where your SLC goes out, and I believe you could add another one of these cards onto this panel. It would give you four NACs in total and another SLC loop, but again, as I said, I'm not sure if that would actually give you more points. I don't think it is. I think you're still stuck at the 200. It might just give you an extra loop. This whole card right here, because the one that came on this one was water damaged, that's how I got this system, was water damaged, it actually came out of my old elementary school. This panel got water damaged at my elementary school back in 2020, when it was leaked on by a drain line, drain line from a boiler room that was above the electrical room, and when that drain line was filled with water, it leaked right down on top of this panel, and killed the CPU in it. This system had an enunciator on the outside. So as what I did is I, when I got the system, I swapped the CPU from the enunciator to the panel because they're both the same thing, exact same component. So is what I did was I took the water damaged CPU out of this panel, put it in here and took the fine new CPU from this enunciator and put it in the panel which is behind there i could open it up and show you guys in a little bit and i didn't know it at the time but this part had obviously also been damaged so it's now replaced with a new one card gives you some relays relay one two three and relay four four so relay one is normally open common and normally closed and then relay two is just common normally open relay three is just common normally open same with relay four and then you have some Looks like smoke power. Maybe that's just auxiliary power. I'm not 100% sure on that. RS-485 connection and then your RS-232, which is what I use to program this panel. You have to program this panel from a computer. This is your RS-232 port and this is the other end that you need to wire into the panel. So the common goes to the common, and then one one of these other two goes to the, one goes to the RX and one goes to the TX, and those are all you need for communicating to the panel. The only pins that actually matter on this, if you're making up one of these cables, is pin two, three, and five. Number five is your common, and you know you need two and three, which you kind of have to just try it both ways. So let's say I was gonna make one of these cables, I'd cut the end off, strip every single wire 
and I know I need pin five. So I go onto this and you can see if you zoom in really close, so you can see right there on the top left, that's pin five. So is what I do is I'd strip a piece of wire, stuff it in that pin, and then I'd meter continuity to all, I think there's nine pins. So I'd have to try all nine of them. And once I got continuity from one of these wires to pin five, I would know that's pin five. And then do the same for the other two with pin two and three. And once I found all of the pins, I could cut off all of the other wires. So I know once I found five, two and three, that I don't need pin one, four, six, seven, eight, nine, if that makes sense. And those can all get cut off. So that's how you make up one of these RS-232 cords. Some uh, some computers have an RS-232 right on to them where you can attach and plug in. In my case, I had to use this, this USB to RS-232 adapter. Something to note that I learned while doing this is if you're plugged into a PC or a laptop that's plugged in, basically any computer that is grounded to the rest of the grounding system of the electrical system, your fire alarm panel will get a ground fault when it's plugged in. So if you're plugged into a laptop that's just running off battery, you won't get a ground fault. However, if you were to say, take the metal frame of that laptop and ground it to something, and then you'd get a ground fault on the fire alarm system. So obviously if it's a PC that's plugged in, it's gonna be grounded and you're gonna pop up with the ground fault. So I just thought that was something interesting to note. That is the quick start programming program. There is the version 1.8, and this is for version 2.5. My panel is running version 2.5, so this is the program that I ran to program the Fireland panel. I believe there is also a version 2.6 out now, and there might be even newer ones, but I don't believe they are publicly accessible, so I think it's just 1.8 and 2.5. This panel is running 2.5, and you can see, on here, we do have our batteries plugged in, wired into the battery connection. This is the transformer. And these pins are what connects more cards to each other. I believe this is how you set the sort of the address on the card, maybe? I could be wrong. I'm not an expert on these panels. You will notice these panels click frequently. That is just how they are. I'm not sure if it's the charging or checking for ground fault or checking for something, but these panels do click, click every once in a while. You just heard it again. This is the back of the zone enunciation board where you can see you could jump over to another one if it was a QS4. And you can see that this is a pretty simple board and that's because the actual CPU isn't on it. This is just power supply relays and the main card where you add on more after it like this addressable SLC card because the main CPU is behind here, which I can go ahead and open and show you guys. This one does have a grounding connection on it for something behind there. Here is the CPU and display. So this is your main, I guess that's our CPU right there. This is the main board. Here's our piezo on the back of it. And this is the display, which is kind of its own separate board. And this is where it jumps over to the zone enunciation. That's that little grounding point there. You can plug in to right here. Also something to note, you can't do mapping on these panels if the devices are used or if they've ever been installed somewhere else. You can't have the mapping capability. The mapping capability of these panels is actually a really awesome thing, especially for ground faults. If you get a ground fault on the system, it will tell you whereabouts that ground fault is as far as how far away it is from the system, like tell you exactly the location, like the ground fault is this many meters 
that sort of thing away from the panel, whether it's negative or positive. I believe this panel will tell you if it's negative or positive. Maybe, I could be wrong though. But the mapping feature is definitely cool. However, I can't set up the mapping as these devices have been previously installed on the system. It was this system, but the mapping would just show up as a map fault if I had mapping set up, so I don't. This jumper right here, I believe, is the jumper for this key switch, the firefighter firefighter controls enable key. You can see currently the jumper is not installed. It's just hanging out there. If we go into menu, we can go into status number one. And then we can go to internals, I believe, number nine. Enter displays. Battery, 27 volts, auxiliary one and two, 35. That seems kind of high, but maybe that's normal for it. And then smoke, okay, 24, or 25, sorry. If we want to do a lamp test, we can hit menu and we can do test. Now you can scroll down like that and then hit enter and then hit lamp test or I'll just go back. You Or you can just hit menu and for all the stuff, you can see it's three, so I can just hit three. Lamp test number one. Lights it up like a Christmas tree. And if you want to log in, you can go to number four for login. One, 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 one. Gets you in very lowest, I believe or login number four, two, 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 that gets you in a little bit higher. So you can see that gives you more options. That gives you your program, uh, activate, disable, enable. Maybe that gives you more in test, nope. Or you can just go all the way up your highest level password. If I wanted to disable something, number five, I could disable zone, device, card, group, switch. So say I wanted to do device number two, and then I'd have to enter that device. Okay, that's pretty boring stuff though. Let's do something more interesting. So I've actually got the system set up slightly differently. It's doing the pull station, and the smoke detector both do a different thing because I wanted to mimic a two-stage system. I really like two-stage systems. However, I couldn't exactly do it the usual way as I don't have a two-stage pull station. So I had to kind of mimic two-stage a little differently where I have the pull station set to do 24 beat per minute and then the smoke detector is set to do temporal three. Usually two-stage will start off with the first stage is 24 beat per minute and then if a second device is activated or if it's not acknowledged within a given amount of time then it will flip over to second stage full evacuation however i couldn't do that but i could kind of mimic it where this will put it into first stage first stage 24 beat per minute and then the smoke will put it into full temporal three and then the strobe is active on both alarms so let's mimic that first i'll just do it each device alone and then I'll do it again where I set off the pulse station and then the smoke detector. That's our 20 beat per minute. That's not labeled correctly. Actually, I'll just put it right in the second stage. Sounds like every Canadian mall ever.
There you go. Second alarm. Smoke slash heat. So there you can see both alarms are up. This LED is set to strobe. You can change it, you can make it go solid. I think you can do temporal three or just flash. Pretty cool, you can change the LED. You can change these ones too. I don't think you can do temp three, but I think you can make them flash. Okay, let's go for a system reset. I guess we should reset the pulse station first, which I was an idiot when making this. You can't actually get a full-size screwdriver and you have to use a short guy because the bell is right there. There you go, so it's done resetting once the light goes out. It's not actually reset yet. There you go. So it's not really like true two stage where if I did set off the smoke again right now, but just the smoke, it would go straight into temporal three or code three. So it's not exactly two stage, but it's kind of interesting, I suppose. Pretty cool that you can add certain devices to activate a certain coding option. And check it out on battery backup if we unplug the panel. AC power failure. Can set off the system again if we wanted. This will go straight into, into temporal. Well guys, that's probably about it for this little EST quick start demo system I have here. So uh, yeah guys, that's it for this quick little demo of the EST quick start QS1 fire alarm demonstration system. I hope you guys like it. If you did and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like to see, if you like my videos and want to see more of them, Make sure to subscribe, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to put those down below. Alrighty, guys. Thanks for watching.